Hi, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. So my name is Nigel Eccles, and I'm joined by my colleague here, Varun Sudhakar. Um, if I go to the first slide, is so uh, some of our background. So the other one to note is our third co-founder and hardest working co-founder, Stuart Tonner, who's our CTO. He's giving a talk tomorrow about the Monaco protocol. You want to see it. That is basically what we've built BetDex on. Give a quick background about myself. Um, I've been involved in the sports betting industry for over 20 years. I've launched countless products in that, uh, in that market. This is actually the third betting exchange I've ever launched. Um, a betting exchange, just so you know, uh, different from a, a sports book. With a sports book, you're playing against the house. With a betting exchange, it's much more like, say, the New York Stock Exchange. You're playing against other customers. That's really important. We'll come into that. Later on in the talk, a uh, colleague here, Varun, is going to talk about uh, what we're launching um, and, and our launch date. So you want to hang around for that. It's, it's really, really exciting. So firstly, I want to talk about the size of the market. Sports betting is big. Um, we estimate about $2 trillion is bet on sports globally every year. That puts us somewhere on a par of the GDP of either Italy or India. This is a really large market. And so sometimes people say, well, hey, it's a really large market. Well, you know, what's, what's the problem? Why does it need Web3? You, know, you could say Web3 is this big, slow database that's really hard to develop on. Why are we bringing this technology? What, what's the innovation? So let me cover that. And then what Varun is going to talk to you about is, is what, we're, what we're building. So one of the first problems um, with the sports betting market might not seem like a problem. There's tons of choice. There's probably like 10,000 different sites you can bet on in sports today. So really fragmented, so lots of choice. But the problem is that from that, there's two things. One is that because there's so many different sites, there's an underinvestment in the product. So a lot of these products are not Web 2 products. These are actually Web 1 products. These are basic HTML products that show odds. And when we talk about payment rails, in, so for some of these products, the payment rails is a guy. I literally mean a guy. A guy you give money to that you go back to the website and you see that your balance has been updated. So that's what you're competing with. And the products themselves kind of suck. Uh, they're not mobile friendly. Uh, they don't work well. Secondly, because of the huge amount of fragmentation, these are small liquidity pools. So sure, if you want to put a $10 bet on, maybe even a $100 bet, you're fine. But if you want to put in a large bet, like a $10,000 bet, you're going to be out of luck with nearly every one of these sites. So these are fragmented liquidity pools. But say, hey, OK, you're going to, you're going to work with one of the larger operators, one that's had more investment, say like a bet 365 or, or my former company, Fando. Well, what problem then? High fees, right? In, in, in the crypto world, we see like 2%. We're like, oh my god, 2%? That's ridiculous. In the sports betting world, 2% is, would be inc an incredible deal. Here's just a typical market where it's basically a coin flip. It's betting, betting the over or under. If you're not familiar with US betting, typically one of the popular bets is to bet the total number of odds scored in the game. And it's set a line, which is about average. And so this should be like a coin flip. You should bet $10. You should win $10. Here, you bet $10, and you can win between $7 and $8. That works out at about a 12% margin. But some other bets, you can see up to a 40% margin on bets like a parlay. This is not an industry that really competes on price. And that's a massive problem if you're a serious better. But you're a DGEN, you want to bet, you pick a brand that you know, can take your scale, you're willing to eat these high margins, what's your next problem? Your next problem is, according to these sites, this is not really your money. They will lock up your money. They will basically put in obstacles like say, hey, you, know, you need to play through your money like five times before you can withdraw it. And even when you do that, they will put in other obstacles that prevent you from withdrawing. And why do they do that? Because they know if you keep your money on site, you're more likely to re bet with it again. So, OK, you're still a DGEN. You want to bet. You pick, a, you pick a brand that you like. You're willing to eat the high margins. And you're willing to accept the fact that once you put your money in, it's probably going to take you a long time to get it out. What's the next problem? You get up the next morning, site's not there. So a lot of these entities 
are regulated in jurisdictions where regulation doesn't really exist. It happens, and it's happened quite frequently, where some of these sites just disappear. There's no recourse. At that point, you've been rug pulled. Your money is gone. So you still want to bet. You're willing to accept the fact that the site that you put your money in might be gone. You're willing to accept that even if you bet with a regulated site, um, it might take you days or weeks to get your money out. You're also willing to accept that you're going to have to bet really high margins. OK, now you're good, surely. But actually, what's this? So this is an actual screenshot. This is not from my account. This is somebody who shared it on Twitter. Goes in to put a bet. Finds out it's restricted to $4.00. Seven cents. I love the seven cents. That is the maximum that site will let that user bet. Why would that be? A very simple reason is that user is a winning customer. A lot of people don't actually understand, and they're not in the betting industry, is that the betting industry restricts winning customers. So let me just say that again. The betting industry restricts winning customers. They are very, very happy to take your money if you lose consistently. But if you win, they will restrict you or even close your account. So the point here is, if you're consistently betting tens, hundreds of dollars, or thousands of dollars with any of these accounts like Bet365, my old company, FanDuel, DraftKings, you're consistently betting, you are a loser. Industry doesn't want that to come out, but you are a loser. And the reason that we know you're a loser is because they're taking your money. Because if they are taking your money, it means that you are losing. Now, we at BetDex sort of feel, that sucks. Like, I don't want to have to deal with all of these issues, and I certainly don't want to believe that the only reason they're taking my money is I'm losing. And one of the biggest reasons you're losing is you're paying between 12 and 30% margin. And so we think there's a better way. And that's why a year ago, myself, Varun, and Stuart started working on BetDex. And, we're going to, and Varun here is going to talk about that in a moment. Thanks, Nigel. Um, so <coughs> you all heard a little bit about how big the sports betting industry is and how, the, the how it's kind of rife with the number of problems, which provide a pretty poor user experience. What I want to talk a little bit about is you know, what we're building and how BetDex actually solves those problems. So first of all, what is BetDex? BetDex, what you're looking at up here is a picture of the BetDex exchange. This is an on-chain, uh, non-custodial P2P sports betting exchange. Uh, the exchange is actually a <coughs> has been in closed beta since July, and it's been in open beta since early October. Uh, since it's been on open beta, we've actually had over 12,000 unique uh, wallets come in, access the BetDex exchange, and actually place trades through our platform. So the exchange is fully licensed and regulated. Um, we announced the licensing last week. Uh, we've been licensed by the Isle of Man Gambling Supervision Commission. Uh, I believe this is actually one of the f first instances of a regulator such as this uh, licensing an on-chain, non-custodial sports betting uh, exchange that's built on the, uh, on the blockchain and on Solana. This license allows us to access about 40% of the world's population. Furthermore, as I mentioned before, the BetDex exchange is a completely non-custodial uh, platform. We never touch your money. We actually never even hold it. All the BetDex exchange is is serves as an interface for you to actually go and place wagers on an underlying uh, protocol, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Once the wager is placed, all wagers are going to be uh, transparent on chain. Um, they'll be, uh, you'll be able to see the smart contract that they're placed on. Uh, all the smart contracts have been audited and are all publicly available. And lastly, and most importantly, as it relates to payments, once settlement is triggered, once a match is uh, finished, the wagers immediately come back directly to your wallet. No more do you have to go to a sports book, try to request for it to get your money back, have to wait you know, two or three days for it to hit your bank account, or even more so, and I can't believe I'm saying this, actually ask you know, for the sports book to send you a check, which is I, I, I kid you not, it is still common to this day. Winners are also welcome on our platform. We do not, we're not going to look at you know, the, the player profile, look at the ROI, and then restrict you, uh, kick you off our platform because you're an ROI positive player. Um, we're not going <coughs> to 
hit you with a special premium charge because you're a, a, a you know, high ROI player either. And the natural question becomes, why are we able to do this, and why do we think that we can do this when other companies in the industry aren't able to? And this is because the Betdex Exchange, it's built on top of the Monaco Protocol. So what the Monaco Protocol is, it's an open source infrastructure for sports betting. It's basically an on-chain order book and matching algorithm. It's permissionless and it's decentralized. The Monaco Protocol uh, pr allows you to pull liquidity across different dApps, leading to tighter spreads and really allowing us to offer a much better experience and much lower fees. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about the Monaco Protocol, uh, there actually is a talk tomorrow that Stuart, our other co-founder and CTO, is providing. Uh, you can also go to www.monacoprotocol.xyz and see the, the uh, dev documentation in the GitHub that's over there. So what's next? I've been, I think, you know, since we started this company a year ago, the most common question I receive on crypto Twitter is, when mainnet? Oh, there we go. So happy to announce and extremely excited and proud to announce uh, the Betdex Exchange will be on mainnet on November 17th, right in time for the World Cup. Uh, you will be able to come and wager with real money on the Betdex Exchange. Uh, <coughs> on the mono and I am also happy to announce that during the World Cup, there will be no commissions uh, charged by the Betdex Exchange, so all trades will be commission free. Thank you. I mean, I can't believe I'm uh, you know, here. I think it was last year, was a few of us were just wandering around Lisbon. We had this idea in an eight-page uh, slide deck. And now you know, we've come this far to come and achieve this milestone. It's been a lot of work that's gone into this. And I really hope to see a, l a lot of you guys on the product uh, in just a few weeks. Lastly, I um, wanted to mention if you guys do uh, w want to come and experience the product, we are hosting a watch party for the Liverpool uh, and Spurs game right down the street. It's about a 20-minute walk. Uh, we'd love to see you there. Um, if you want to come and meet the team, you're more than welcome to. Uh, we will also be having a gambling contest using our DAP. Um, so, uh, uh, so yeah, we'd love to come and, and see everyone there. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you.